Leitner Whitmer was born on June 26, 1867 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to David and Catherine Whitmer. The family believed that education was highly important, so Leitner was enrolled at Episcopal Academy in Philadelphia in 1880 and graduated June 30, 1884. Whitmer then enrolled in the University of Pennsylvania, a.k.a. Penn, and graduated in 1888. After graduating, Whitmer accepted a teaching position at the Rugby Academy, which is a secondary school for boys. This is where his work with clinical psychology started when he worked with a boy who he deemed had verbal deafness, which today might be considered dyslexia. Whitmer entered Penn's graduate school in 1889 in the philosophy department while he was still teaching. He had originally intended to work towards an advanced degree in political science, but the same year he enrolled at Penn, a new professor arrived. James McKean Gattell. Soon enough, Whitmer became Gattell's assistant, and together they set up a psychology laboratory. However, once Gattell left Penn for a higher paying position at Columbia University, Whitmer decided it was time to go to the University of Leipzig. Whitmer arrived in Germany in February 1891 with a plan to earn his PhD under Wilhelm Wundt and returned to Penn to direct the psychology lab. During his time at Leipzig, Whitmer conducted an experiment where he investigated the aesthetic values of differing visual forms by using 14 objects and asking participants to assess which shapes were most appealing. His dissertation, On the Experimental Aesthetics of Simple Spatial Relationships of Form, was published in one's journal. Whitmer graduated on March 29, 1893, and received his doctoral degree. In the fall of 1892, Whitmer returned to Penn as a lecturer in experimental psychology, he reopened the psychology laboratory at Penn and started to conduct experiments. Then, in 1896, the event that started clinical psychology occurred. A school teacher visited Whitmer and brought with her a 14-year-old boy who had difficulty with spelling. The teacher had been a student in one of Whitmer's classes and reasoned that psychology ought to be able to help the boy with his mental problem. The case was treated successfully, which led to additional cases being brought to him as word of his success spread through the educational community. These instances led Whitmer to found what was possibly the first psychology clinic in the world in 1896. He was so enthused by his success that he discussed his therapeutic program at the annual meeting of the American Psychological Association. He wanted his colleagues to use psychology to help problems that confront humanity. For the first few years, Whitmer saw all the patients himself, who were mostly children with learning disabilities and behavior disorders. However, as the case demand grew and grew, Whitmer hired some of his doctoral students as well as additional staff. At this point in time, he also decided to keep case records for the interest and use of others. So in 1907, he created a journal called The Psychological Clinic. The journal outlined programs of education and training to prepare psychologists to do clinical work, and he officially named the field Clinical Psychology. Whitmer developed the clinical method, which involved a team approach consisting of a physician and social worker alongside the psychologist. The team was involved in testing the patient, determining the diagnosis, and designing and conducting the treatment. They used a multitude of instruments, such as a chronoscope that was originally designed by Wundt and Cattell, as well as a hip chronoscope, which could measure time in thousands of a second. And finally, the chymograph, which measured responses over time. During the first decade and the 400 patients seen, most were children who were diagnosed with some sort of educational handicap, such as a learning disability. Eventually, the clinic changed their emphasis to children of average intelligence, and then onto children and adults who were intellectually gifted. Over time, specialty clinics were added. Those clinics included specialties on speech defects, vocational guidance, and counseling. By 1931, the case records had grown to nearly 10,000 in various clinic departments. Whitmer is named as the founder of clinical psychology as well as school psychology. His goal was to provide a practice that prevented and intervened. While many called for an applied psychology, Whitmer created one.